three is a beginner inversion practice. When we think about yoga inversions, we often think about being upside down. But an inversion is actually any pose where the heart is further from the ground than the head. This includes poses such as downward facing dog or a yoga bridge. Please remember to like and subscribe and stick around to the end where we break down a pose from today's practice. Begin kneeling at the back of your mat, hands on your knees or folded in your lap as you connect to your breath. Place your right hand down beside you. Side bend, left arm reaches up and over. Try to keep the hips down on the heels in this position. Over to the left. And back up. Clasp your hands behind your back, ground your hands down, small back bend as you lift the chest and gaze up. Folding forward, keeping your hands clasped, raising your arms up high. Release your arms to your sides lift the body returning to kneeling. Coming forward onto the forearms, curl the toes under and press up to a dolphin pose. Get strong through the shoulders as you gaze back towards your feet. Press through the hands, straightening the arms to downward facing dog. Widen your stance, feet to the edges of your mat, walk the hands back and lower the hips to a garland pose, hands together at heart center. You can stay in garland pose, or if you're practicing crow, we can move into that now. Coming forward, if crow is still new for you, maybe you're just rocking a little bit back and forth, getting used to the position, maybe playing with lifting one foot then the other. When you're ready, raising both feet up. Good, return to garland pose. Reach forward and make your way to downward facing dog. If you like, walking out the heels. Raise the right leg to three-legged dog. Bend the knee, opening the hip. And float back to wild thing. Opening the chest, pressing those hips up. Return to three-legged dog, right leg up. And release the leg to downward facing dog. Raise the left leg to three-legged dog. Bend at the knee, open the hips to the left side, float back to wild thing. Returning to three-legged dog. And downward facing dog. 
using forward, walk or hop to the front of your mat in a forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, upward salute. Exhale, hands to heart. Take a few breaths here in mountain pose. Step the right foot back, raising the arms in a warrior one pose. Nice bend through the front knee, making sure the knee is not turning in, that it is facing forward over the toes. Clasping your hands behind your back, lift the chest and fold to the inner edge of the front leg in a humble warrior position, bowing the head. Engage the legs and come back up flat back to warrior one. Straighten the front leg, folding over in a pyramid pose. Walk your hands across center, coming to a pyramid pose on the opposite side. Shifting your feet so that the left toes are now facing the short edge of the mat. Bend through the front knee and raise the body to a warrior one. Clasp hands behind your back, lift the chest, folding to the inner edge of the front leg in a humble warrior, bowing the head. Engage the legs and return to warrior one. Straighten the front leg, turning to the long edge of your mat in a five-pointed star pose. Your toes are now facing forward, outer edges of the feet are parallel to the short edges of your mat. Hands to your hips, fold forward with a flat back, releasing your hands down onto the mat. Walk your hands back, see if you can line up the heels of your hands with the heels of the feet. Allow your head to hang down here, stretching the neck, or if you can, you can gently rest the head down on the mat. Plant the left palm ahead of you, step the left foot through to the right side of your mat, making your way to seated, and then reclining onto your back, knees bent. Position your feet hip width apart, arms at your sides. Let's raise the hips to a bridge pose. If you like getting deeper into bridge pose, Bring your shoulder blades closer together, lifting the chest up high as you grasp hands beneath you. Take the time to deepen your breath. We're going to hold here. Release your hands and your shoulder blades. Lower everything down. Let's send both legs straight up to a legs up the wall pose, just allowing them to hang out here. So we're not engaging any muscles. The feet aren't flexed or pointing. We're just doing enough to keep them upright. Slow down your breath here.
Coming up next, you can stay in legs up the wall pose or we can move to a supported shoulder stand. Raise the hips up, giving a kick to the ceiling, bringing your hands to your lower back. Take some time to shimmy up high onto those shoulders. Then once you're up as high as you think you can go, bring your legs together and point through the toes. You can stay here or drop your right leg down to a half plow pose. Option to either float the leg above the ground or touch the toes down behind your head. Raising the right leg all the way up, dropping the left. Again, you can keep the leg floating or touch the toes all the way down, depending on your mobility and how deep you want this stretch to be. Try to keep those right toes pointing straight up. And raise the left leg. You can stay here or go into a full plow pose, lowering both legs this time. Again, you can keep them hovered or touch the toes all the way down behind your head. And if you're comfortable doing so, you can release your hands down onto the mat. Now wherever you are, let's all meet back in a legs up the wall pose. Engage your legs and point the toes. Let's lower them together all the way down onto the mat. Place your hands beneath your seat on either side, elbows out. Pressing through the elbows or forearms, let's arch the back, lifting the heart, gazing back behind us in a fish pose. You can float the head or rest it gently down on the mat here. To release fish pose, we lift the head, gazing towards the feet, then lower down onto our backs and release the hands. Draw your knees in and rock a little from side to side. Next, you can stay here for a rest or we can go into a wheel pose. If we're going into wheel, remember you have the option to first lift to the top of the head and then press all the way up. We're taking our feet close to our hips, flipping those hands, positioning them under the shoulders or as close to as we can, pressing up and then shifting back, trying as much as possible to stack those shoulders above the wrists. Good, let's lower it all the way down and meet back in our knee hug. Now let's all release our legs out long onto the mat, finding comfort in this position for Savasana. One hand on your belly, one hand on your heart. Focus on your breath.
legs together. Point the toes as you reach your arms up overhead in a morning stretch. Bend the knees, turn onto your side, and press up to seated in an easy, comfortable position, taking a few deep breaths to finish up. There's quite a lot going on in a standing wide-legged forward fold, so let's talk about that. First thing you want to do when you come to your wide stance is make sure that the outer edges of the feet are parallel to the short edges of the mat, so we don't have our toes turning out. If anything, you might be even cued to turn your toes slightly in just to make sure that we are parallel here. So as soon as we do that, we're going to engage the legs without locking the knees, so try to keep those knees soft. And what we're going to do as we come into the fold is we're going to find this upward energy coming all the way through the front of the body. So as we tense up through the quads, we're going to notice them raise up a little bit, maybe even our kneecaps lifting a little. And then we're going to get long through the front part of the body. Now, if we're unable to get long through the front of the body in the fold, this is where we're going to want to go into some modifications. But before we even do that, let's go into the pose. So we're going to be folding from our hips and not our waist. Folding from your waist looks something like this. And you'll notice it's a lot harder for me to come all the way forward if I'm just starting the fold from up here. The fold needs to come from the hips and to help target that, we can bring our hands, I see, we can, we can bring our hands to our hips and use that as our guiding point. And now when we're in the pose, our hips aren't going to be back. But to come down into the fold, we can send our hips back behind the ankles just to make sure that we're staying really, really long through the body. So we're long through the back, we're long through the front, we're just long. Okay, so we're going to send the hips back as we lift the chest and fold forward from the hips. Okay, so staying long here, making sure we're not locking the knees. And then as we come down, we're going to shift our weight slightly to the front of the feet so that we're lining up the hips over the knees, over the ankles. Okay, so once we come down, you can bring your hands all the way down, and that's gonna be the goal. But if you can't touch your hands all the way down, maybe you wanna widen your stance and see if that's a little bit easier. If not, we can use our blocks for that. So that's our first modification, is going to be to fold and bring the earth closer to you, hands on blocks. And once you're here, if you have back pain or if this is hard on your back, you can stay elevated like this. Otherwise, try to release the back and fold over, okay? So if your hands do touch all the way down, we're gonna bring them down to the mat and we're gonna fold that body over. And I'm still aiming to get long through the front of the body in this fold here. So what I can do is walk my hands slightly back. And my goal is going to be to bring my fingers in line with my toes to start. So just walking back slightly, and here we are. Okay, once here, I'm gonna aim to walk my heels, the heels of my hands, in line with the heels of my feet. So that's a cue we hear quite often. Then I'm gonna rest my head down, and if I can, touch my head all the way down. And if your head touches down easily, you might want to narrow your stance to make this a little bit more challenging. Once you achieve this position here, you want to make sure that your elbows are pointing straight back and that they are stacked above the wrists, like this. Good. As we come up and out of this pose, we're going to tighten up the legs, really engage those leg muscles, and we're going to come up with a flat back. This helps to strengthen the back. Good. So how far you bring your hands back is really up to you. That's going to be something that comes with practice. So while you're in that fold, try to work to see if you can. Play around with the distance of your feet to see where you're most comfortable here. You want it to be a little bit challenging. You want to feel a really, really good stretch and a really nice release through the upper body. But we also want to be comfortable in this pose. So 
Play around with hand positions, play, play around with your stance, how wide you bring it. Something to mention is that once we are in the fold, we are tightening up through the quads here, but we're releasing through the seat. So you're getting a wide through the sit bones, so there's no tension here. Okay. Another modification, if you have back pain or if you find that particularly difficult, you can bend the knees coming down. Especially if you're really tight in the hamstrings or you have a hamstring injury, there's nothing wrong with bending the knees here. You can even bend and on blocks. Something else you can do to lower your head all the way down is to rest your head on a bolster or a cushion. Especially if you have some kind of neck pain or something that's preventing you from touching your head all the way down. So coming into our standing wide-legged forward fold, there are several different arm positions that we can use to get into it. So the first one being hands to hips as our guiding point to fold, lift and fold, and then we just release our hands down. Another arm position that we can use coming into this and, and gives an, an additional stretch through the upper body here, clasping the hands behind the back, and then as we fold, we raise the arms up high, and then when you're ready, releasing hands to mat. Good. Another one similar to that is we can clasp our hands behind our back or clasp at the forearms, just binding behind the back here before going into the fold. If this is where you're comfortable, you can just hang out here and then when you're ready, again, bringing the hands down. And then another position for our hands, once we are down, if we like, we can hold on to our big toes. So in this position here, and then we, we don't wanna just let the arms like relax here, we wanna send those elbows out above the wrists. Good, and when we're here and we're binding around the toes, we can use that to pull us deeper into the fold. If you're a little bit more advanced, you might even find yourself going directly into a tripod or forearm headstand directly from the folded position in your standing wide-legged forward fold. Something like that. <laughs> As you can see, there are so many things to learn about every pose there is in yoga. It really is a wonderful practice and I'm so happy that you're on this journey with me.